cinema uh, mirrors the society and somewhere I feel that because of the right conversations and because we are at a place where women are sort of taking the charge in life, we're also seeing it uh, at least on OTT. Um, and I, it's not, I mean, it's, we still have, you know, <laughs> films and shows where, where women are sometimes not treated as like, you know, they're just like props to the, to, to the narrative. I tend to play uh, individuals mm. and not just because a cop, I played in two, doesn't mean that it's the same. So the individual, there are no two individuals who are the same in this entire world. And that's the whole crux of it. So when I'm playing an Ismail or when I'm playing an Akesh Mari, the two different individuals that I'm playing, they happen to be cops. So to be a cop is not so difficult. I, need, can't, I can't have hair like this, obviously. <laughs> uh, things like that. And depending on how much of a slouch or an or a athlete he is, his, his physique would... That's all there is to it. Hello and welcome to News 18 Shosha. Today we have with us the cast and crew of Bombay Meri Jaan. Welcome all of you. Thank, Thank you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, I want to start off asking you and correct me if I'm wrong. I think most of you all have all migrated to Bombay at some point of time in your life. Uh, what do you have to say about this city and, and which is known as city of dreams and has it really become a city of dreams for all of you? Yeah, to the outsider, it's a very different city. But to an insider, it's very different. Uh, two things I have noticed as far as uh, Mumbai is concerned is that when you look at from the outside, you see a lot of chaos. When you start living here, two things you notice. One is, I think it's a microcosm of the world. Mm. Everything that is there in this entire world is there in Mumbai. Okay. So, uh, so it's, it's that kind of a spectrum it has. So, uh, it's up to you what you want to do. So uh, it's up to you how you want to conduct yourself in the city. And number two is that I found that 24 hours is a bit too less in the city. So uh, it's truly a karma bhumi if you go to you just You keep on working and you don't realize that you are continuously working. The moment you get out of Mumbai and go somewhere even close by, suddenly you have too much of time yeah. on you. Yeah. Uh, so the city is in that sense a, a workaholic city. And uh, as I said, it's, it's a microcosm of the world. Yeah, it's a city that never sleeps. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's it's working, working all the time. And the beauty of it is, uh, you know, the, the humongous middle class which mm. uh, resides in this uh, city, which keeps it uh, ticking. I think there's an infectious nature uh, to a lot of the world cities. Mm. You know, in, in that way, Bombay is, uh, you know, Mumbai is no uh, different. Uh, it's also uh, really addictive. And before you know, you're in love with it. And no matter where you're traveling in the world, uh, eventually you start missing Mumbai uh, after some time. Uh, you know, the, the madness and the chaos that uh, KK spoke about. But there's also a, a certain method with which, uh, you know, there's a clockwork uh, way that uh, the city functions. It's got a life of its own. It's mm. like one big, big, massive uh, machine from a H.G. Wells uh, story. So I think that is the beauty and charm uh, of Mumbai and that's what keeps all of us going. I would actually say that Mumbai mein jaan hai. <laughs> so uh, there is life, constant life. It's buzzing and uh, as KK said, karm bhumi. Or uh, pe jo work culture, you will not find it anywhere. And as Shujat said, I totally agree. Wherever, no matter wherever you are, end of the day, it is Bombay. <laughs> so you have to come back home to Bombay. And uh, Bombay hai hamari jaan. <laughs> Everybody said everything, but it, the city is very special to me. I, I came to Bombay, I came to Bombay and realized that I wanted to become an actor. I didn't know, I didn't grow up wanting to become an actor. And this is where I found, you know, what you say, your, my calling. And, uh, and I still love it. And it's been 15 years now and Bombay feels like home. Uh, I'm born and brought up in Mumbai. I'm a oh. complete Mumbai kar. Okay. Uh, I love this city. I don't think I would want to live anywhere else in the world, but yeah. So that sums it up. Right. So the question is to Sujat and Kasim. You know, over the years, we, we've seen a lot of gangster dramas, uh, be it films or series. Um, when, when you are, you know, making one more or adding one more, uh, 
and rightfully doing so when we saw the trailer it it looked very interesting where you would want to go and watch the series um you know how do you make sure that it it stands out while you're writing while you're conceptualizing and then when you're directing it yeah so i think filmmaking is something which uh, you know every director has his own you know style and his own flair and they bring their own sensibilities and their uh, own um, uh, you know human interactions uh, to a certain piece of content no matter what genre uh, it is uh, so yeah for me i mean uh, of course there are some great uh, stories and great films uh, being made on crime and uh, crime drama great series as well but i didn't make any of those sure. i made this right yeah. uh so that for me is uh, of utmost importance how i see a story and for me bombay meri jaan goes way beyond uh, just being a crime drama that for me was always the backdrop and the setting of it uh at the heart of it is the story of a family and uh, what happens to this family uh due to a certain amount of choices that uh, the individuals uh, make whether it's ismail whether it is sakina whether it is dara and at the end of the day we all are a sum total of the choices that we make uh so the f- story purely rests on that uh, ethos thematically for me it works on uh, nature versus nurture it is uh, of you know a father a mother questioning uh, what probably went wrong in their parenting uh, or what they did right or what they didn't do right uh above that uh, uh, the challenge of creating the environment uh, of the period of the society at uh, that given point in time and what unfolded with the people there uh, was what was uh, you know challenging so i didn't approach it as a filmmaker i didn't approach it that i'm telling a gangster uh, drama no. i was telling the story of one family and what happens to them like any other family just happens to be set against the backdrop of crime kasim you'd like to add to when well, see i i don't think we ever sort of consciously tried to do something different or something similar uh we created these characters it's more character driven than plot driven these are two sort of characters one is a father one is a son and and they're on opposite sides Uh, of of the law one is with the law enforcement one is and the beauty about it is both of them are trying to do whatever they are for the family to give a, a you know to the best to the family so i i don't think we consciously made an effort to make it any different uh one thing that we have really really researched on is that era so when you see the architecture of that in in the show every era is properly defined be it the costume the hairstyling uh, you know everything so we've consciously made it very authentic so that it's an immersive experience for the viewer and so that we can transport them into that era so that's that's what we've consciously worked towards you play drakesh maria in black friday you playing a cop out here it's it's not about the comparisons because out there you're trying to clean the system out here you are a father to a person who because of certain uh, you know situations in his life decides to become what he becomes do you do you feel you've seen both sides of the crime you like in this in this when when you see the, the two things i have often said this again i shall repeat it that i i tend to play uh, individuals mm. and not just because a cop i played in two doesn't mean that it's the same so the individual there are no two individuals who are the same in this entire world and that's the whole crux of it so when i'm playing an ismail or when i'm playing an akesh mari are the two different individuals that i'm playing they happen to be cops so to be a cop is not so difficult i need can't, i can't have hair like this obviously <laughs> uh, things like that and depending on how much of a slouch or a or a athlete he is his his physique would that's all there is to it uh, but i'm more interested in playing people playing the individual So for me, a smile matters more than a smile the cop. Mm. He happens to be a cop. It's fine. So uh, and therein lies the complexities because if you start just playing a role, it's it's, it's very simple. It's, uh, I've often said this: "Baya hath bahar nikal ke danda leke ha, to tum hi ho jata hai." 
the moment you start playing a cop. But that is not the idea. I never done that ever in my life. So uh, for me, which is why it will become different automatically, because I'm playing an individual who's completely different from the previous individual I played. And that individual has to come out from within me. I believe not only an actor, every human being has an entire range of human beings inside them. Uh, an actor has the facility of pulling up that human being, which might be the most unsocial, socially not acceptable human being, and yet get an applause for it. Mm. You can't do it outside. So uh, that's the process. So I, I tend to take out a smile from within me, because I believe all acting has to be internal first, even if he's playing an extroverted character. Sure. So uh, that's what I do. So I, 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 I think, I don't know how much I have succeeded or not, but this is what I have done uh, in, in, this, in, the, in this show, uh, is to find that smile within me and uh, treat the script as the world that I am in completely, without going outside. And if you immerse yourself in it, you will, things will come out. And the more you are with it, suddenly one form will come. And you know that, oh, I've got a smile and that smile is from within me. And that's it. It's a slightly boring process for most people. For me, I find it interesting to be immersed in that world, you know, and, and see how it comes out. And, and that's, that's where the beauty of your acting lies, sir. Uh, you know, when we, when we talk about the body of the work that you've done, uh, we always see you doing various characters over the years. Uh, but one thing that, that is always associated to you is he's an underrated actor. Do you ever get... Uh, you know, ever, you know, does it ever bother that, you know, you're always called an underrated actor? It's fine, whatever, as long as they don't call me a bad actor, I'm fine here. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> for me, uh, I don't know the ratings though. Uh, I have no idea of the ratings, but yeah, if, as long as it's not a negative connotation, I'm perfectly fine. And if it, even if it's negative, that also is perfectly fine. It's, it's their curse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, this question is for the, for, the, for the ladies. You know, until a few years ago, of female actors wouldn't escape this question where whether a meaty role is written for them, you know. Uh, with, with, with the last couple of years, especially with the OTT, uh, you know, kind of booming, would you say okay, we can put this to rest, this, this whole debate to rest? I would say that we can put it to rest, but definitely uh, OTT has given... Uh, given us better portrayal of women, mm. better meaty parts, as you said. Yes, definitely. Compared to being bracketed, as in OTT has definitely cut those shackles. And But still, I think there is, of course, there is lots, but still there is a lot more, I would say, to be explored. Because ultimately, uh, I mean, that's my... Most of the content is still thinking ki, there is this guy, there is this man, and now let's beautify the story with people around him. Then, okay, he has a mother, he has a sister, he has a girlfriend, he has this, that, da da da. So, there's largely still that space where we think, oh, there is this woman, and now let's add the rest of them. We are having let's those characters. Love but interest. Yes. <laughs> so, yes, definitely OTT has. Uh, given us those wings, yeah. but still I think there's lots, lots and lots more to be explored. Would you like to add? Because, I think this you know, format, long form generally gives you this opportunity because you have, you're telling a story in eight to ten episodes, you know, usually. It gives you a chance to explore characters and have multiple tracks yes. and, you know, uh, characters that are, like Sir says, people. You know, not just ki is ki love interest hai, is ki maa hai, is ki behen yes. hai, which is okay. what, which is how female characters used to be. I also think that cinema uh, mirrors the society and somewhere I feel that because of the right conversations and because we are at a place where women are sort of taking the charge in life, we're also seeing it uh, at least on OTT. Um, and I, it's not, I mean, it's, we still have, <laughs> you know, films and shows where, where women are sometimes not treated as like, you know, they're just like props to the, to, to the narrative. But this is definitely not the case. This is a show that focuses it on these not. strong male characters. But every single woman character in the yes. show has a very, very important part to play, has, is a person 
in in herself yeah. and not just uh, by how they are related to the heroes does it also allow you all to kind of explore opportunities like in in kritika in your case you did a tanda or a hush hush yes where you know you can also have that kind of a range as an actor where you can go and you know chew to those meaty parts which come in i mean and and give you that kind of confidence that you can okay you can pull off rather than like like you mentioned you know some kisi ki biwi ya kisi ki maa hmm. that that's that was the whole general perception that that we had so does it also give you that kind of wings to go and explore those yeah stories? absolutely i mean i've i've also done television where it's all about the women Uh, yes. The lead characters are all women, and this is what happens to the male characters there most of the times. But uh, now, I mean, on OTT there, are diverse. See, Hashash was a an all woman cast almost. Uh, it was a, you know, you have those kind of shows. You have a Tandav. You have a story like this. A story that is about a male dominated world is obviously going to have more men. But uh, just to not do it or to pass on it because you know. Uh, to on a on a story like this just because the the, the it's not focused on the women characters would also be a loss so yeah. i don't look at it like that i think if and i want to be diverse in in the roles that i choose and i end up doing so there is ample to choose from yeah and as she said once you have a story which is spread over uh, like 10 episodes and things there is ample for yeah. every actor every character to bite into Ashish sure. Siddharth, uh, Kasim, mm-hmm. I want to ask you all: uh, Is there a is there a plan to carry forward this franchise? Uh, you know, probably maybe have a woman in the lead or something, because we mm-hmm. we've had stories or we've heard stories about franchise. I uh, I mean, honestly, to tell you, it is an ongoing uh, saga. Yeah, it's it's an epic journey, and it is going to unfold into many more seasons. I'm hoping so, inshallah. But uh, uh, yeah, the approach is not that we need to consciously have a male lead or a female lead, or it is the narrative that drives the characters, and I think that is where we are focusing uh, on. I have personally never set out to tell consciously a man's story or a woman's uh, story. Uh, it depends on what is uh, the emotional aspect and what is the emotional narrative of uh, those characters and of the story essentially, and where it's going to lead. I mean, Mumbai Mary John has children, and it has adults, and it has old people, and you know, it's, it's got a whole plethora of uh, of characters. And we are hoping to obviously, you know, carry forward. Uh, uh, this is just the first season, and uh, yeah, we are looking forward to the response once it releases, uh, you know, on the 14th. And we're positive that people are going to enjoy it, and uh, to take it forward uh, in terms of a single narrative which is being told. Just one thing I'll add is every character in this show. as a distinct voice be it a male or a female actor they have a distinct voice and that's going to come across thank you so much for joining us and looking forward for bombay meri jaan thank, thank, thank you thank you hi this is kk menon <laughs> i'm shujaat sadagar nivedita bhattacharya this is kritika kamra you kasim jagmadia and you watching all of us on news 18 social shop <laughs>